Chapter 2. It Hits Home. Eli picked up his daughter and they went back to the house. Eli looked over at Lisa as he opened his car door to get out. Do you have homework, honey? Lisa nodded as she looked at him. Her eyes were wide with excitement. Yes, Daddy, but not a lot. Eli laughed. She was so serious. Okay, honey. You do your not a lot of homework and I'll fix us up some supper. Lisa smiled at him. Okay, Daddy. Eli got out and shut his door and went around to help her out of the car with her book bag. He then headed for the door to unlock it, with Lisa following close behind. After opening the door, Eli helped Lisa take her coat off and hung it up on the coat rack. All right now, honey. You go and do your homework and Daddy will fix you some supper. Lisa giggled. All right, Daddy. Eli headed straight for the kitchen, opening the cabinet to pull out the pots and pans he would need. As he reached for the fridge door to start collecting the meat and vegetables, the phone rang. He stopped and reached over on the counter by the fridge for the landline phone. Picking up, he said hello. It was Erica. What's wrong? His instant worry kicked in. She never called during work hours. Erica was silent momentarily at first, and finally, with a shaky voice, she spoke. Eli, some kind of government workers are here in the building. Eli was confused, and she would have seen it had she been on this side of the phone. And? That word is all he could seem to muster at the moment. Eli! Erica became silent again, and after a moment she returned, but she began whispering. They came in right before my shift ended, and they have these scanner things and medical bags. I can hear people crying down the hall. I don't know what's going on, and I'm afraid to leave my office. She was truly scared. Eli could hear the fear and confusion in her voice. He felt the urgency to react. I'll be there in 15 minutes, Erica. Stay put. Hide under your desk if you need to. I'm coming. No! Don't come. Don't bring Lisa, please. Call the police and have them come save us. I'll hide, I promise. Erica was panicked and sounded like it. Eli let out a deep, long-held breath. I'll call them and I'll wait, but I won't wait long. Eli hung up with Erica and dialed the police. Yes, my wife works at Roman's Law Offices and she just called me panicked. She said there were men with medical bags and people from crying. I, I need you to go there and escort my wife out unharmed, please. Her name is Erica Lansford. The dispatch was a woman, and her voice was shaky when she answered. Sir, I I'm sorry, but we can't send anyone to help your wife. Those men are everywhere right now. Eli was confused, and if the dispatch could have seen the look on his face, she'd understand it. Wait, you can't send anyone? Those men are everywhere? What, what in the hell does that even mean? The dispatch woman took a deep breath and began whispering her next reply. Sir, it's the mark. You know, the mark of the beast began suddenly this morning. School children were first, apparently. Parents have been calling in all afternoon since school let out. Please, sir, relax. Your wife will be home afterwards, all in one piece. Unless she stopped then and let the last of her words trail off. Unless what? Eli was starting to feel sick. Unless she refuses it, sir. In which case, I don't know what will happen to her. Eli was beginning to panic. Have they covered the police station? Did you take the mark? The woman let out another shaky breath. They haven't been to my office yet. I'm hanging up from here and sneaking out the window. I, I need to go home and warn my husband and protect my child. Eli had a scary thought enter his mind. He had picked up Lisa, and no one had mentioned anything. Everyone acted normal. He needed to check Lisa. Eli slammed the phone down and ran upstairs. Lisa, he called as he ran. What, Daddy? Lisa stepped out of her bedroom, her pencil still in her hand, and looked at him, confused. Eli slowed down as he reached her and dropped to his knees. Honey, did some men come to your school today and do anything to you? He silently prayed as she thought hard about it, her little head leaning to one side and her mouth twisting in deep thought. Oh, you mean the men in the suits? Lisa said this with a smile. Eli's heart sank. Yes, baby, the, the men in the suits. What did they do to you? Lisa smiled again. They shined a light on my hand and they gave me this bracelet. She sounded excited. They asked me if I wanted to be able to buy whatever I ever dreamed of, and I told them yes, Daddy. Eli held his tears back. Can Daddy see your hand? The one they shined the light on, baby? Lisa shook her head in excitement and grinned. Yes, Daddy. She held her right hand out to him, palm up, and then flipped it over, showing the backside. It was this one, Daddy. See the line? Eli looked at it. A faint black line with three clear breaks in it, and what looked to be Roman numerals in the breaks, defacing his beautiful baby girl's perfectly soft hand and almost passed out. 
Gather yourself, Eli, he tried to coax himself silently. Yes, baby. Daddy sees the line. Lisa, you and I need to go get Mommy from work, okay? He stood up and looked away from her. How could this have happened? Why would God allow a child to be marked without a choice? Okay, Daddy. Let's go. Lisa skipped past him and headed down the stairs. Daddy's coming, baby.